Hello and welcome. Today we're working on cash receipts and cash payments on the cash flow statement. So if you're new, my name's Jeff from Finally Learn, where we're teaching the financial accounting and the principles of accounting series. And we are in the statement of cash flows, chapter 12. And so remember, we have two different ways of doing the statement of cash flows. We have the indirect method. The indirect method starts with net income and plus or minus any adjustments. So if you see the operating activity section that starts with net income and, and adds things like depreciation, then you know that's the indirect method. The direct method is what we're kind of looking at today is really figuring out cash receipts and cash payments. So we're looking at cash receipts and cash payments assuming we have the balance sheet and the income statement using the accrual method. All right, so here's some rules and um, we're gonna look at this for a minute. You might wanna take a screenshot of this so you can uh, understand how this works. And so have a guide to work on these problems. So in cash receipts, we have typical things like cash received from customers or cash received on sales. So we'd look for sales or sales revenue and we'd look for the change in accounts receivable. So we have sales on account and therefore we have um, some accounts receivable going up or down anytime we make a sale or anytime we collect on cash. Then cash received from rent, we're gonna look at rent revenue and the change in rent receivable. These are cash receipts to us. And then interest, we're gonna look at interest revenue and the change in interest receivable. Now, if we switch over to cash payments, then we're going to look at cash paid to suppliers, and there's going to be a couple things going on. We'll look at cost of goods sold first, and then plus or minus the change in inventory, and plus or minus the change in accounts payable. So we have two things we have to look at when we do cash paid to suppliers. Now, wages and salaries are going to be very similar. So we'll look at wages expense and or salaries expense, depends on which one we're looking at. And then the change in plus or minus the change in wages payable or plus or minus the change in salary payable. Now interest is going to be interest expense and interest payable and taxes, taxes expense and tax payable. Let's do an example of each of these just to make sure uh, you're starting to understand what's going on. So let's look at cash receipts. So we might say, hey, what's cash received from customers? And here we have the following information. We have sales of 152,000. We have beginning accounts receivable of 14,000. We have ending accounts receivable of 11,500. So we're gonna put the sales of 152. So we're trying to find the cash received from customers. Now, this is the sales we made to customers, but we could collect more cash or we could collect a little, a little bit less cash. Now, the timing of it is what makes a, a count receivable go up? Well, it is when we make a sale, we would um, debit account receivable and credit sales. So we make a sale that's not cash sale, that's a credit sale, then our account receivable goes up. So we made a sale, but cash has not happened yet. And then what makes account receivable go down? It's when you make a uh, a collection of cash, so you debit cash and credit accounts receivable. So the difference here is 14 minus the 11,500. The difference is 2,500. So the question is, do we collect more cash or less cash? So really the, the answer is, this is gonna be either a positive 2,500 or a negative 2,500. Now what makes our account receivable for the year go from 14 down to 11,500. It means we collected more cash than we made in credit sales. So we're gonna add this together. So our cash received from customers is gonna be a positive 154,500. Now, if accounts receivable had gone up, then we take a subtraction. If the answer was reversed, then we would say we subtract out the 2,500 and we've collected a little bit less than uh, the amount of sales. All right, let's uh, switch sides and let's look at the cash payments example. 
So we have salary expense and salary payable and how much cash is paid to employees or how much cash have we paid on salaries. Well, we start with salary expense, uh, $455,000. And the difference, um, four fifty-five, dollars And the difference is going to be the thirty-seven to minus the $33,000. Now, the question we have to ask is, has the increase in salaries payable mean we paid more cash or we haven't paid all the cash yet? Well, here, salaries payable goes up when our employees earn their salaries and it goes down when we pay it. But here it went up, so therefore we're going to subtract out minus the $4,200. We're going to subtract the $4,200 because we actually paid slightly less we paid four hundred and fifty thousand eight hundred as our cash paid on salaries or cash paid to employees. So we got several videos then related to figuring out cash receipts and cash payments. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.